What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. In the last two videos, we talked about what makes a serve truly impressive, which is A, to be able to hit your spot with dart-like precision, and B, to be able to maximize your racket head speed to get that snap and power. But we didn't place as much attention on what makes it truly effective. You see a, you know, players like Pete Sampras or Roger Federer, they're known to have the greatest serves in the world, but it's not sheer power that sets their serve apart. Because even some of these college guys, you know, who are big, strong, they practice a lot, and you know, they can bomb serves away with, you know, pretty decent accuracy. But when you look at a Fed or Sampras, these guys are acing consistently in the low 120 mile per hour range, even though that's not fast for ATP standards. So when it comes to a higher level, power is not the issue. It's disguise. So, guys, today, while, you know, the more the fundamentals and the basics take your surf from beginner to intermediate to advanced, this is like the cherry on top to move, to take a surf from good to great. After the tough matches that he's had during the week. Now, before we get into the drills, we're going to cover two concepts that create disguise. Now, the first concept is whatever part of your body that moves at contact is the part of your stroke that is used to aim. So, for example, if I were to completely lock my arms on a ground stroke right, and hit the ball with my body, now I'm using my body to aim left or to aim right. And ideally, we don't want to use our big muscles to aim because this versus this, it looks like two completely separate motions. I'm telegraphing to my opponent where I'm aiming, and they're gonna be prepared and ready and, and know exactly what I'm gonna do. Instead on, again, using the ground stroke as the analogy, we are going to wanna to keep our body still as we swing, but our big muscles are still following the ball, but I wanna use my hand to either change direction left or to change direction right. Now. If I use my shoulder through the swing like this, it's better than you know just using my body to aim, but even my shoulder, if I hit left or hit right, a good savvy opponent is gonna pick up on those cues. All right, so when it comes to the serve, all right, that's why we've done, in the last video, we've isolated the shoulder, kept the shoulder still at contact, that way we can isolate the hand left or the hand right to snap T or wide. All right, compared to if I were to shoulder the ball like this, now I already have to line my body up to serve wide or to serve T. And while it's not the worst thing in the world, again, a good, a good returner will see the difference and start to pick up on that. The second concept for disguise is that whenever a player starts the acceleration of their stroke, they already would have had to decide and choose which direction they're aiming. So, for example, if I'm hitting a forehand and I'm aiming to the left corner there, okay, once I start my, sw my swing, I can't start my swing and then choose to hit the other way, all right? So I'm either hitting this way or hitting this way once I start this acceleration. Again, while that's not bad, ideally for disguise, we wanna keep our swing slow. Again, big muscles following the ball slow and strong and only accelerating right at contact with the small muscles. And this allows me to hold, 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 hold my shot. And then at the last second, go right or to go left. Compared to that split second of, of accelerating early, defender starts running. So when it comes to the serve, okay, ideally I do not want to accelerate with my arm down here. Like, like, like this, because even if you have good technique, I already have to, again, line my body up. It looks like two separate motions, whether you go, you know, wide or whether you go T. I want to be able to keep my shoulders slow, and we've done those slow shoulder serves, slow here, rhythmic, and then at the last second, be able to snap my small muscles. So I'm not locked in to having to line my body up to the direction. In the past couple of videos, we've done the Sampras finish, so you can isolate the hand at contact, 
We've also done a slow shoulder serve drill. Hopefully you are well prepared for what we're gonna do next, which is called the, the Sanford's drill, and it's a tough one. You're gonna need a partner for this drill who is going to actually, after you toss, they're gonna call out T or wide. So T or wide, and you have to actually hit that, try to hit that location. Now the rule is whether they call out wide or they, go, or they call out T, you need to be able to hit that with a flat serve, flat serve going both ways. And a lot of players will want to hit slice out wide and flat out the T, but that defeats the purpose of this drill because in this drill, we're not trying to hit two different serves to two different locations. We're trying to disguise the same serve to two different locations, all right? So if you're unable to hit flat serves, both wide and T, then this drill is probably a little too advanced for you. I suggest you go back to, you know, videos one and videos two. So when it comes to, you know, super duper advanced, legend has it that Pete Sampras could actually toss out of the corner of his eye using his peripheral vision, see which way his opponent is leaning and actually snap the serve the other way. And while obviously that's extremely impressive, I don't know if that is true. Can you do a little bit of the Sampras drill? So as they toss, just say T or wide. Huh? T or wide? Oh. Yeah. So when? So, yeah, as they toss. T. Wide. T. Woo! <laughs> Let's do one, let's do a few more. All right. T. Wide. T. All right, last set. Pretty good though. Wide. 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 While disguise won't allow the average player to ace, your opponent just reacting a split second late allows you to cut their options down from maybe two to three off the return to maybe one to two. And them having less options allows you to cover those options and gain a big advantage on the first ball. Now what's also worth mentioning here briefly is the ball toss. If your ball, if your toss is inconsistent and it's going there or there, yeah, at, you know, at a high level, it's definitely going to destroy your disguise. But I want to mention the ball toss, more in particular to the position of your shoulder. All right, if I toss too far in front of me and the ball is too far in front relative to my shoulder, well, this is reaching, but it's going to force me to move my shoulder at contact if the ball's too far in front of me. So it's gonna look like, like this, or like this and shouldering the ball and giving away my disguise. A proper snap gets the ball more above my head and within the Sampras drill, you can change the direction here or here, but you can see how it's much more above my head, you know, versus something like that. Now, I'm okay if, you know, you wanna toss into the court, but when you watch the pros, toss into the court. They actually use their leg strength to jump into the court so they're contacting the ball in their strike zone, you know, as opposed to reaching like this, like many club level players who don't have that, that type of leg strength. And one thing to note is, you know, Roger doesn't throw the ball particularly far into the court. So it is not, it is not necessary depending on what you're trying to do. So to wrap this video up, guys, this is a very high level difficult concept that even a lot of pro players haven't like really mastered and that's why you see uh, you know Serena Williams who has a power and disguise you know truly set her serve you know apart from the rest if you're you know uh, intermediate player anything below advanced let's just say even for me serving you know I might only get to have dedicated serve practice once a week I get more bang for my buck working on other concepts, you know, just the basics and fundamentals because 
already like hitting your spots with you know consistency and power is is hard enough and my surf is not anywhere near pro level now if you're if you want to go pro i highly recommend you you become you know you try to master this concept but even if you're just in that advanced you know tier advanced level you know bandwidth it may make sense to have a baseline level of proficiency with this concept you know if your service is you know is getting is getting read like a book you know, good returns at an advanced level are just going to just start stepping in and clobbering your serve. Even if you hit serves hard, they're going to just be able to chip every serve back. You won't be able to get them off balance. If your serve is, doesn't have some disguise, you'll never run combos consistently. You'll never serve and volley consistently. So while you may not need to be Pete Sampras, again, just make sure you're not doing the things, you know, uh, massively wrong in terms of telling your opponent, you know, where the ball's going. So much of comboing comes down to balance on the first ball. Now watch the first two shots. My balance compared to my opponent's balance. Just being jammed a little bit allows me to really weight transfer the court and it snowballs from there. This next point, look at the returner is on great balance. And on this backhand right there, I actually get knocked off balance. And even though I try to recover, it's too late. And this last point, I just serve it right up into the strike zone, so there's zero chance of him being off balance there. So, thanks guys for tuning in. In the next video, we haven't been giving the shoulder a lot of love in the in the past couple of videos, so we're really going to delve deep into you know how to use the shoulder properly because it is a very important part of the serve of the kinetic sequence. So, thanks, and I'll catch you next time on the channel.